Hey, good afternoon. Greetings. Uh, salutations. Uh, peace, baby. <laughs> oh, happy Friday. Well, at least it's Friday right now. Uh, 16th day of October 2015. Time now, 6.24 p.m. Eastern. The markets are closed. So that's me unringing the bell they rang this morning. Uh, we're going to do a real quick recap of the concierge trade alerts from last night. We did not have a free trade today. If you are part of the free trade program, you get three to five trades per week. And this week, you got three. Sunday night, I'm sorry. <clears throat> yeah, Sunday night, uh, Tuesday night, and Wednesday morning. Is that right? No, Thursday morning. <laughs> there you go. Uh, it's all on the Google Plus page. If you don't know where that's at, I can show you. Would you like that? Okay, let's go to the Google Plus page. Now, shortcut to get there. CFRN.net. Click E-mini radio blog. Click watch recent broadcast. And here you'll find uh, the daily radio broadcast. It's radio and video, uh, audio and video. We archive it here, and this particular page goes back, gosh, we're probably closing in on a couple of years, so there's literally hundreds and hundreds of hours of content. Now, we talked about this on the radio show today. If you go to a radio program like this, it will clearly say that it's today's radio broadcast, uh, daily live e-mini training. I mix it up a little bit sometimes, but when you click it, RN, and it says community of uh, two hours and a half, that's a standard radio program, okay? Now, I used to do a lot of what we call, we came to, we came to be called the after show. In fact, the after show became uh, more popular, I think, than the regular show. But because of the personal mentoring sessions, I, I really just haven't had the time to hang around and, and do the after shows. And I used to really enjoy the after show. Uh, I looked forward to it. And the after show was the point in time when all the other co-hosts and guests were gone for the day, clocked out, off to live their life. And I had a audience that was still eager to learn. Tell me more, Mr. D. And so I would. I would hang out uh, sometimes as much as six hours. Well, four hours after the radio show. Quite a number of five-hour days. Tons of four-hour days. Now, do you see all the scrolling that I've been doing? I'm, I'm only back to July. Now, it's not just radio shows. You'll also find articles, stuff like uh, Catch a Falling Knife Part 2. That tells me there was Catch a Falling Knife Part 1 somewhere. Sometimes they get a little bit jumbled up. You'll see trades, special trades that we put out. Uh, you'll see seminars. You'll see webinars, uh, Q&A sessions. Oh, To Catch a Falling Knife. Okay. I don't even remember what this was about. Oh, okay. This was just uh, catching up on some of the concierge trade alerts. But here's what you're looking for. As you scroll way back in the way back. Just let me try to get you down. Let's, let's take a... See, I really need to be back in, I think, May and June. But it'll take forever to scroll all the way back there. So you're going to have to do this. Um... See, this, this broadcast is three and a half hours. So there's probably half hour to an hour of the after show. Okay. Let me just, just scoot it down, scoot it down. But once you get back into the thick of things where I was doing the after show every day, uh, 
show you I watched 1,200 times. But it's a regular show. Hey, good evening, show. everyone. Greeting. <clears throat> All right. I'm still scrolling. I just want to get you into an area. Because somebody... T I mentioned how I used to spend hours doing the uh, after show. And basically, it's technical analysis training. And someone said, man, I sure wish I'd have been around then. And I would sure like to go listen to some of those. And at the time, as I was doing the shows... Okay, here you go. This show is five hours and 13 minutes, okay? The typical radio broadcast is two and a half hours. So this one went five hours and 13 minutes. And when you see a high number of views, like 1,300, okay, that tells you that there's a lot of meat on the bone. Now, what you can do, if you don't want to sit through, you know, the news and the headlines and what happened on that day and time, just scoot up. Fast forward up to the point where you can kind of see that everybody else is gone and I'm the only one left. And I'll be teaching whatever someone from the audience, if they ask me about trend lines, if they ask me about support and resistance, if they ask me about Fibonacci, uh, I fall into out of radio host mode into teaching slash almost preaching mode. I'm, I'm that passionate about it. So it's there. Now... I put this challenge out to the radio audience and in particular to the person who asked me about these. I would just be forever. In, I wish I had done this, you know, as I was creating them, but I didn't. If you go back in time and you find two hours of good technical analysis training, like I know, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and just write down uh, this date right now, June 5th. June 5th, 2015, okay, because I can go into that one, I can edit out that final two hours, and, and that becomes a standalone class, and if I don't do that, then it's forever lost in time, you know, maybe some modern day, uh, some futuristic uh, digital archaeologist might come across it, other than that, it's... And Mark Douglas and I had a conversation. Um, he also had much work spread across different computers. Maybe you know what it's like to fill up a computer and just get another one. And then you fill it up and <laughs> you just get another one. And, of course, you're always intending someday to uh, condense it all and put it in the cloud and organize it and stratify it and, yeah. I'm still planning. If you, now, you could probably go back a full year. See, this date is June 5th, 2015. I bet you if you, if you had the patience to go all the way back to June 5th, 2014, you would find um, after shows there. Hour, two, three hours. A day. I mean, I'm telling you, there's a period of time there, probably close to a year, where I did an after show almost every day. So, if you would write down the dates of anything that you find valuable, and if you could even give me it like, Dwayne, on June 5th, at three, three hours into the show, dude, you started cooking with gas. Man. When I write the book, I will give you credits. And in, in the, uh, you know how they do that? Yep, I'll give you credit. I will. I'm serious. Uh, it would be not only a great favor to me, but it would benefit. Uh, and CFRN, being a part of this community, is about giving back. It really is. That's what being a part of a community is about. And so help traders who will follow in your footsteps, you know, some... You know, the future you who's struggling, trying to get consistently profitable. Wow. Again, shame on me that I didn't, when I did one of these two, three-hour episodes of, you know, pure training, I mean, it was in the moment. It just happened. It wasn't planned. It wasn't scripted. It was just, it just happened. But I could have made a little note, you know, you did three hours of some pretty fair stuff today, but I didn't. All right, so that's it. I'm done begging. If you can help me, I'll greatly appreciate it. Okay.
Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. But at least you know. Now, oh, one other thing. If you go back to Thanksgiving, around Thanksgiving of 2014, I used to do a recap of the concierge trade alerts in a much different way. I used to do it on a four tick range chart bar by bar. I have recap videos that are two and three hours long. I know it's, it's a little bit obsessive to be honest. Now I have some recap videos where we just use the alerts. I have other recap videos where we use the indicators and the alerts. And I have recap videos where we just use the indicators. Now that's just on this page. If you go over to youtube.com slash CFRN, you'll find a couple hundred more hours of not just radio shows, but webinars and seminars and Q&A sessions and teaching and just stuff. I have left a massive digital trail in my wake. And, uh, you know, I hear a lot these days about hiring uh, at minute, uh, virtual assistants, they're called. People, uh, in fact, some of the people whose podcasts I listen to on a regular basis, they have digital assistants. Used to be the that India was the go-to place for virtual assistants, but I had a rough experience, and I'm not going to, you know, write off a whole country because of a bad experience with a couple people. But I've heard really good things about the virtual assistants in the Philippines. Now, I spent time in the Philippines when I was in the military, in the Navy, and wonderful people. Uh, I had the time of my life. Um, Subic Bay, Tropics, uh, it was just beautiful. You can pay them... Uh, now, this is going to sound like me being really cheap, okay? You can pay them 40 bucks a week, and you'll get an eight-hour day, five days a week. And they are excited, okay? They can't make $40 a week in their economy locally, okay? Now, I may have my numbers off a little bit. Maybe the number's 100 bucks. you know? Maybe it's 100 bucks. people are dancing in the streets because... They can not only support themselves, but they can support their family and their parents. And you know what I'm saying? The American dollar still has buying power, still has a lot of strength in certain parts of the world. So I could find, and boy, I still need your help, but I think that's the way to go. Um, I have a young man that I do give some work to in India. He's a very nice young man, but just some of the tasks that I need him to do uh, the, the language barrier, it's, it, he has a computer science degree. It's such a shame that the language barrier separates us. But I, the thing is, is I have to teach the digital assistant, you know, what's valuable and what's not. That's the tough part. That's the rub. So, but if we spent our first 40-hour week, if I could just teach her or him to go through, to scroll through every Fast forward through each radio broadcast and capture anything beyond three hours, that would be a huge start. And uh, by golly. And so see, now not only am I going to be able to get a job done that I need done, not only will that bless you and all the future CFRN traders yet to come, it will provide economic stimulus and a job for someone in a, in a country where the economy is not strong and many people go to bed hungry. And by the way, like many people go to bed hungry here in America, the land of plenty. I know it's hard to believe, hard to imagine, but it's a fact. So let's move on. All right. This was supposed to be just a recap video. So let's, let's do it. Uh, weekly trading zones for the S&P this week. Here's the Sunday night Globex open. At a weekly trading zone, you expect one of three things. Price will consolidate. Some people call that coiling. Price will get rejected. Or price will slice through the zone like a hot knife through butter 
on an hourly chart. Now, when it does that, you don't see it that often, but when it happens, typically it means that price is going to come back to that zone and do the job. It's going to do the consolidation. It's just putting you off for a moment because there's or a few hours because there's momentum in the market. So it's easy to see that we went from zone. Let me find my cursor. We went from zone to zone to zone to zone, down to the zone, up to the zone, up to the zone, back down to the zone, down to the zone. You get the idea, right? See, from 2000 to 2006, that's six points. So six down, 12 back up. And then as we went up to the next zone, uh, it was another 5, 17, 22, 28 in this little area right here. That's 28 points of travel. And you have a pretty good idea where price is going. If you Google CFRN weekly trading zones, you can read the articles, but at the top of the Google search page, click images and look at some of the charts. Okay, five years ago, price was doing the exact same thing. It was going from zone to zone to zone to zone to zone to zone. It's what the zones do. I do zones for the S&P, the Dow, the Russell, and the Euro. I can do them for crude or gold or soybeans, and I have done them for all those different markets. Uh, math is math. It's just so time consuming. And I like to spend a little bit of time with my family on Sunday nights. So that's why I've trimmed it back to four. But if there's ever a vote, and if it's put to a vote and a consensus of people say, we would rather you do bonds than the Dow, then I would be happy to do that. So you, you guys let me know. All right. And down here, zone to zone to zone, 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 zone. You go, okay, but how do I know when to get in? How do I know when it's going to try to go to the zone below or it's going to go to the zone overhead? How do, I, how do I know? Great question. You're paying attention. Okay, just one example. Okay, price breaks up. It consolidates here, okay, for a bit. We could drop down to a one-minute chart and see exactly how many minutes we consolidated here. These are hourly candles, so it was part of this hour, part of this hour. What we're interested in is 2015. Why? Because that's two points away from the zone. The zones have what I call, for lack of a better term, like a magnetic quality, okay? And so I want, if I'm gonna go long, coming out of a zone. Now, we would never go short into a zone, right, like this. We would never go long into a zone like this. Well, that's not true, actually. That, that's a specific trade setup. Let me explain that. When you get within two points of a zone, it's, it's like a lock that you're going to hit the zone because that force is going to pull it in, okay? Now, as we leave the other side, okay, as we head out the other side, I want to get two points away from the zone so that this magnetic pull, and, and that's, I don't like that term. It, it reminds me of that whole, like, you know, breaking the code kind of, I don't know, weirdness. I don't, <laughs> this is math, uh, okay? <clears throat> and so once we get to 2015, now I'm comfortable putting on a long trade to take me to where? 2019. Yeah, but it overshot it. Okay. So you can trail your stop or you can just put a hard target there. Uh, you could put a hard target there and trail your stop. I mean, there's any number of ways to handle it, but you know that you've left the zone. You know that you want to be long at 2015 or to be even just a little bit more sure of yourself, go one tick above 2015, okay? 
if if two points is that force field, let me go all Star Trekky on you, then give it another tick, all right? And so now we're going to go 2015 and a quarter up to 2019. Well, that's three and three quarter points. That's a done for the day trade. And it happened in, well, you got the 2019 in one hour here. You see that? Okay. Now, if you got long at 2015 and a quarter, the swing high of this hour was 2017. So think about that. You went from 2015 and a quarter up to 2017. If your daily goal is two points, that's eight ticks. You just got seven right there. Price then pulls back. The swing low is 2014.75. It pulls back two ticks below your low, okay? And it gives you another opportunity. Important prices, important areas are almost always tested. So what you could do is on this trade, you could, you know what? I need to back out of teaching mode right now and just do the recap. I'm happy to teach you this, uh, but there's only so many hours in a day. We spent the whole day Friday consolidating across here, and I talked about this morning that of late we've seen some late-day rallies, and of late we've seen some late-day Friday rallies. Well, there we go. We tried, did we not? One, two, three hours we were reaching. We had one more zone left overhead, 34.35. We didn't make it, okay? Close for the week is 20.26.50, 20, okay? Now, last night's concierge trade alert for the S&P was... was... <clears throat> to consider being short below 2017. And I was quoting the wrong number today on the radio show. I got everybody confused, so I apologize. Uh, consider being sh Let me just show you. This way, <laughs> there's no confusion. Uh, there. Long above 2024 or short below 2017. Okay? On the first move down... We got to 2015, okay? So that's exactly eight ticks. If we're going to drop a tick to enter, then that means that was only seven ticks, not eight. However, when this candle opened, it continued down. So the market actually made three and a quarter points available. We triggered a couple more times on the south side. And uh, when I walked away from the markets this afternoon... After the show, after my mentoring class, we had not triggered the 2024. So this is sort of news to me. I'm just seeing this now for the first time. We hit 2026.50, so that's two and a half points. If you bump your entry up one tick to 2024.25, then... Uh, it's going to be two and a quarter points, not two and a half. Do you follow me? All right. So I'm going to start abbreviating swing high as just SH and swing low as SL. 20, 26, 50. 20, 26, 50. Okay. So whenever you see SH, it just means swing high. Actually, it's also it's the swing high and it's the hod <laughs> high of day. When you see if I F dot dot dot, that means if the opportunity presents. Okay. So the swing high was twenty sixteen fifty. 
So you were able to get your points on the short side or the long side. That's always a good thing. Okay. Bonds. Consider being short below 159.05. No, that's not right. Consider being long above 159.05. This first move got up to 159.09. That's four ticks. But if you're bumping it up a tick to enter, then it's only three ticks. And then the swing low over here is 159.03. So that's only a two tick drawdown. So actually, because in bonds, since we're only going for a four tick target, if you're trading the 2420 blueprint, then you're only going to risk four ticks. Now, everything else we risk eight ticks. If you Now, if you're trading for the bigger swing trades, that type of thing, you, you may be using a larger risk but for the 2420 blueprint grow your business everything we stand for and teach eight tick hard stop everything crude gold don't care how volatile it is eight ticks because eight ticks no matter how volatile the market is eight ticks is enough to tell me if i'm on the right side of the street or not or it can tell me that the market's too volatile for me to be in right now, and so I'll back off until um, it calms down, and I'll just go find a different market where things are not, you know, so jittery. All right. Now, the short side on bonds was 158.12. I'm not going to go into the long explanation why there's a long side and a short side. I did that last night and this morning, so if you missed it, catch yesterday's recap <clears throat> so we get a three tick move then we draw down two ticks and then we go up to 159.11 well if you got in at 159.06 then that's a five tick move okay done for the day just that's it done for the day important prices important areas are almost always tested bing bada bing bada bing okay all right Crude oil. Uh, crude oil was good. Crude oil's just been good uh, all week. I think we had one one less than pleasurable day. Uh, Monday, we had a $2,000 per contract day. I'm not saying I made $2,000 per day. I'm saying the market made $2,000 per contract available if you got short at 49.05. That was the alert that we emailed out to our partners and our clients Sunday night at 6.45 p.m. Eastern. You could have, now you only need 10 ticks to make the $100 per contract per day. So you could have done that. You could have got out at 1000 bucks a day. Ultimately, it went two grand. And then on Tuesday, you could trade long and short. On Wednesday, Wednesday was the day that was kind of a whimper, okay? Like here, you know, it went six ticks. Well, we need 10. But six is enough to get your stop to break even. At four ticks, we take our stop to break even if we're trading the blueprint. So, uh, moving on. And I'm not glossing over this. On this day, I went over it in detail, okay? And I'm supposed to just be doing Friday's recap. I'm not supposed to be recapping the whole week. <clears throat> 11 ticks. 13 ticks, 52 ticks, 37 ticks. How many do you need? 10. Okay. And this is today, Friday. And here's what happened. Uh, we had 7 ticks on the downside, 27 ticks on the upside, 64 ticks on the downside, and 30 ticks on the upside. How many do you need to be done for the day and to stay on track to graduate in 24 months? As a 20 contract trader, you need to make 10 ticks. Oh, that's 30. Now, here's the rub. You need to make those 10 ticks in 10 trades or less. 
If you never heard that before, you're going, what? I have 10 trades to make 10 ticks and I'll graduate? Yeah. Obviously, you haven't read the 2420 blueprint. We have done everything in our power to make this as simple as possible. Trading's not easy, never has been, never will be, but it can be simple, okay? All I can do is invite you to take the trial, and then after the trial, once you've used our software, learned how to put on and take off the trades the way we do, uh, if you decide to enter into our 90-day mentoring program, uh, I will personally mentor you for 90 days and help you get from where you are to where you want to be. No more gidgets, gadgets, gizmos, wizards, gurus, crystal balls. This is about learning how to trade, how to read a chart, understand what's happening in that particular market, and then how to place a trade that agrees with the current trend of the market based on whatever time frame you happen to be looking at from one minute up to one year. Okay. All right. Uh, Euro. Consider being short below 136. I'm sorry, 11,365. It's a 21 tick move. And then uh, another move down to 11,356. And then a move down to 11,357. The euro pays 1250 per tick, so you only need eight ticks in that market. <clears throat> Soybeans. The alert said to be short below 902. You need two pennies. We dropped from 902 down to 899. That's three pennies or 12 ticks. Then we dropped. 15 ticks and then we reset and we dropped uh, 12 ticks again and then we reset and we dropped again and this time we dropped all the way down to 897 and a quarter and so 97 that would be five points but it's 97 and a quarter, so that's four and three quarter. So that's 16, 17, 18, 19. That's what that is. Okay, one, nine, okay. All right. If you hear that lovely sax music in the background, uh, that's my son. Yeah, he's in the eighth grade, and he can give Kenny G a run for his money. I'm serious. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but I think you can. Uh, okay, what was next? Let's get let's get this done. The Dow. Okay, the Dow. We said to consider being long above 17,120, which didn't work out so well. We only went six ticks. You need 20. Uh, to get your points for the day at $5 per point. That's what the Dow pays. On the short side, it was to be short below 17060 The first break to the downside, we need 20 so we need to get down to 17040 and that's right there. Swing low is 38 here. Okay, we risk 8 ticks, the whole, you know, whole 9 yards, everything's the same. So you had a chance to get your points for the day there, and there, and there. Okay, but not there. All right. Russell. Now, Russell was the monster yesterday. Uh, it made 350 points, or $350 per contract available on the short side. And then in the afternoon, it made $1,400, $1,480 per contract. That was the potential. What's the chance that you got it all? Actually, in on this particular trade, because we knew we were going from zone to zone, right? See, you've got you had two things. If you receive the concierge trade alerts, 
And as a partner, you also receive the weekly trading zones, okay? Then when you trigger in at 1148, if you're not just trading for your daily goal, but you've maybe graduated beyond that and you like to trail your stop and maximize your potential, well, the logical target is up here at 63 slash 64. So here's one with some confidence. I could say, you know, good chance you got it. Now I'm going to show you something else real quick. Okay. I'm going to put this indicator on for just a moment. When I do the recap, I don't usually drag the indicators in. But I just want to show you something. And if you decide to become a partner, I'll teach you how to do this. Um, okay. I'm going to turn everything off except the backbone of the indicator set. Okay. Let's see if that worked. It did. Okay. Now. The way this works is this indicator that I just laid on here. Okay, we know that we have an alert to be long at 1148 based on some specific reasons. Now, we also know that we can trade zone to zone once we get past 1144. That's that two point deal that I was talking about earlier. Now, based upon the indicator that I just laid up here, there's a third thing that will tell you to get long the open of this candle, which was 1152.60. And so 1152.60, call it 11.53, ran up to 11.63. So that's 10 points or $1,000 per contract over two hours. I mean, so you have so much confluence going on at this point, it's just off the charts. Good stuff. Now, I can teach you how to trade just this if you want. And uh, today... Uh, using this very basic uh, methodology with the backbone, you would get short the open of this candle. Okay? Now, if you did that, the open of this candle is 1161.50. Now, the drawdown is 1163.40. Hmm. 61.50 to 63.40. That sounds an awful lot like two points doesn't it? But we only risk eight ticks. Hmm. So what happens? What do we do? Well, we can use a larger stop like we've talked. Now, this would be a perfect example of putting your stop just above the weekly zone if you're looking for a bigger move, okay? Now, I showed you this for a reason. I don't want you to think that everything's just all rose petals over here at CFRN. Okay, we have to work. We, you know, it looks real pretty when I go through and walk you through the trades and show you the setups and show you how everything worked. And I mean, it is a beautiful thing. I won't lie, but. You're going to have to face realities like this. You're going to have to write. One of the first things you do when you become a partner is we have you sit down and write a business plan and a trading plan. And you're like, well, I don't know how to do that. Great answer. <laughs> we give you the material. We explain to you in great detail exactly what a business plan needs, all the components. The trading plan, we, we tell you what the components are. Okay? And then in your own words, with your own personality, you write your business plan, you write your trading plan. 
I get calls from time to time from someone who wants to have a personal mentoring session. And I'm like, oh, okay, great. Uh, shoot me over a copy of your business plan, your trading plan, uh, your journal, and uh, some screenshots of the last couple of trades that gave you some trouble. And let's see how I can help you out. And they go, oh, well, and I'm like, hmm, yeah, well, what? Well, I didn't exactly write the business plan or the trading plan. And I'm like, wait a minute. You've been with us six months. You're trading real money. How in the heck have you not written your business plan and your trading plan? Well, you know, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm procrastination. I, I just want to make sure I was going to, you know, be able to really make some money at this thing before I did all that work. <laughs> We're talking about a business where you know, one trade yesterday had the potential, had the potential to put anywhere from $1,000 to $1,400 in your pocket on one contract. Okay? Do you know how much margin it takes to trade one Russell e-mini contract? I'm sure most of you do. But there's bound to be somebody in the audience that doesn't. Nope. Nope. Okay, do I put your glasses on? <laughs> I'm sitting here in semi-darkness. The sun's setting. 500 bucks. Okay. It costs 500 bucks to trade one e-mini contract. So... A 10 contract trader, this move here, from here to here, these two candles, you would have had to put up $5,000 to make the trade, but because you're using a hard stop, you're not actually risking all 5000 okay? You're, you're risking... If you're using an 8-tick hard stop, well, we already talked about on this move, you got stopped out. Over here, you didn't get stopped out, okay? This just was smoother than glass, right? So the opportunity, so uh, here's my point. Uh, I'm sorry, but you wanted to make sure you could actually make some money. Do the work, okay? Please. If you're going to become a partner, if you're going to spend the small amount that we charge to become a partner, and in the grand scheme of things, it's, you know, it's two of these trades. Come on. But I almost sometimes, I feel like I should raise the price times 10 so that people will realize the importance of doing, actually doing the work. It's so important that you actually do the work. Okay? When I, we give you the information Write the business plan. Write the trading plan. You know, work on your discipline. Do your homework. We have a partner's meeting, a workshop, and I say, all right, this is your homework. Please do this. Please spend a few hours tonight or tomorrow or over the weekend working on this. It will help you, okay? Please do it. Because if you think somehow, just because you wrote a check to us, you know, or click, made a few key clicks and became a quote-unquote partner, I got news for you. Becoming a partner does not make you a trader. Just like having money in an account somewhere, that doesn't make you a trader. It makes you a guy with, or a lady with some money in an account somewhere. A trader is defined by someone who earns profit in the market. You see, in order to get from the one contract to the ten contracts, you have to earn profits. That's how you pay for the second and the third and the fourth and the fifth. That's how you add contracts, by reinvesting the profits that you earn in the market. All right? Okay. So enough of that. Let's move on. Mm, we're done. Done. One more. Gold. Okay. All right. Just one more market that we haven't covered yet. Gold. Oh, the daily chart on gold. I don't know if you were tuned in the day that I put these two windows of opportunity up. It was probably about this day here. No, error. <laughs> Hello. 
Uh, glad it wasn't a snake, as they say. Uh, this was the day that I drew these two windows of opportunity, and I went through the process. In fact, what day is this? Uh, September 23rd. So on September 23rd, chances are there was an after show, or I covered it during the normal radio show. And you'll see why I selected, you know, from 51 to 63. That was an area we wanted to be long. Now, we had some nice profits here, 51 up to 56.40. Then price drew back, okay? Almost, you know, look here at this low, look across here, and look across here. Support and resistance, I don't care what they tell you, it's not broken. Don't try to fix it. It's all right. So. Now, does it always fit perfectly in the box? No. But you get the idea, right? Okay. So, price got halfway through the window and then retraced back down to a known area of support. Made another run got turned down. I was starting to question at this point, you know, because now I'm starting to think, well, maybe I've got a double top going on here. Then this thing just blasts right on up through and the swing high uh, with the box there. Oh, if I move the box, I can measure it. Uh, the swing high was 11.91. 70 and I had set a target of 1192 so I missed it by three ticks and I'm okay with that okay hope you are okay gold uh, last night on the trade alerts we said to consider being short gold below 1180 long above 1184 so, come down through 11.80 on the very first candle. Get down to 79.20. That's eight ticks. But then it continues and it continues and it continues. Ultimately, it goes 48 ticks. Now, $10 per tick, that's $480 per contract. Here, it went eight ticks and... You got stopped out at break even or better if you're trading by the 2420 blueprint rules. And then at the close of the day, we got um, a drop that took us all the way down to 1174.30. So let's say it was 1180 to 1174. That would be from 80 to 74. That's six ticks. But it's not six. It's 5.7. Okay? So you, you got 57 ticks, 570 bucks per contract. Now, that's, of course, if you know how to get out at the exact swing low of the day. I don't. I don't pretend to. But I know how to trail a stop. And we'll teach you. We'll teach you how to do it. Okay? No monkey business. No funny business. Uh, although we do like to have a good time. We like to laugh and cut up. But when it comes to trading, uh, we get serious. Because this is how we earn a living. Okay? Mortgage got to be paid. Kids got to go to college. Uh, life happens. Uh, my president chose to give me affordable health care. I mean, I actually had some health care that I could afford, but then he gave me affordable health care that now costs me $17,000 a year before I can get a free Band-Aid. I'm not making this up. I'd be happy to show you my... Well, I won't be happy but I would be willing to show you a copy of my premiums 
my wife and I, we've been married over 30 years. We have we've never we haven't spent seventeen hundred dollars, thank God, going to the doctor in thirty years. And this year we had to pay seventeen hundred dollars. And the premiums themselves are eleven hundred and change a month. And then there's a five thousand dollar deductible. And so it's seventeen and change before I get services. Now we're almost up on the end of the year. Um uh, Almost makes you want to go fall down the stairs or something. You get your money's worth, but knock on something. Would dear God, I don't want to fall down. I'd rather just pay the money and be healthy. And, and you know what? I'm very thankful. God has blessed my wife and I and our kids with with good health, and uh, so thankful for that. And um, cherish good health. It's important. Money. You can always make some money. You know, we live in America, and if you don't live in America, there's still opportunity, and I know it's more difficult in some places than others, but health, you know, if you know someone whose health is not as it should be, uh, pray for them. Show grace and mercy and kindness and love and pray. Just pray like the Dickens, man that God will do a creative miracle in their life and restore their health. Because when you got your health, man, you've got pep in your step and you're in a good mood and you can be creative and you can do wonderful things and leap tall buildings and it's a beautiful life. Amen? Amen. All right? So yes, make it, getting in the markets here, making money, that's cool. But all the money in the world. You know what? Money doesn't buy happiness. It does make it does make feeling like crap feel a little better. But ultimately, you need your health. So I'm saying this to myself: to Wayne, sitting is the new smoking. By the grace of God and Chantix, you managed to quit smoking five years ago. After a lifetime of smoking, I was convinced I was the only guy on planet Earth that couldn't quit smoking because smoking defined who I was. I was the Marlboro Man, right? And if I didn't have one in my hand uh, from the time I woke up till I went to bed, I wasn't complete. I mean, I went outside to smoke. I was respectful. But the thing that really, my wife harped on me for a decade and it didn't do any good. Uh, but when Gabe came to live with us, this was before the adoption when he just, little guy, you know, he, we took him in. He was four. And we'd be sitting there on the couch watching TV. And uh, I'd get up to go outside to smoke. And he would say, Dad, where are you going? Oh, don't worry, son. I'll, I'll be right. I'll be back in just a minute. You just go ahead and keep watching the show. I'll, you, I'll be right back. Dad, are you going to smoke? You know, don't worry, son. I'll just, I'll be right back. It's, don't worry about it. Daddy, please stop smoking. Oh, man. What a ripper that was. And after about a year, I just, I couldn't do it anymore. So I went to the doctor and I asked for help. And uh, I, to I told him I wanted to try the Chantix because I saw the commercial Yes, I knew that my eyes could fall out of their socket and, you know, you know, my manly parts could, like, fall off and I could get piles and hemorrhoids and gankles and, oh, gout. I mean, <laughs> cauliflower ear, you name it. Impacted wisdom tooth. I knew the danger of taking this pill. But I also knew the danger of smoking. So I took the pill. And it did make me a little nauseous. Some people get weird dreams. I'll tell you where I got the weird dreams. I got the weird dreams on those nicotine patches. Oh man, that was like that was like that was like uh, that was like Golden Gate Park in the '60s. You know, the whole world was tie-dyed. I went places and did things in my sleep on those nicotine patches that I can't even begin to tell you about. Now, other people say that the Chantix gave them crazy dreams. It never affected my dreams. It did make me a little nauseous first thing in the morning, but I gutted it out. 
pun intended. Okay? And pretty soon the nausea went away. What it does, here's how it works, because I'm really trying to encourage somebody, God speaking to me about this, and just somebody listening to this, you're getting ready to get them, go out and smoke. And it's going to taste like bleh, because I just told you that. And I've implanted it into your subconscious. I've just robbed you of all smoking pleasure for the rest of your life. Sorry. But the way this Chantix works is the first week you just keep smoking. I mean, you try to cut down, and every time you think you, you smoke a cigarette during that week, you think about it, and you go, you know, do I really want this? And, you know, why do I, why is it important to me? And, and, and there's counselors uh, that you can call and talk to on the hotline, and I never took advantage of that, but it was nice to know that they were there. And so you continue to smoke for a week, doing your best, you know, to cut down if you can. If you can't, you just get through the week. And then you have your quit day, which is day number seven or day number eight. And that's the day you're supposed to just not smoke. Well, I've never been the strongest willed guy. And so uh, on quit day, I fell down. But the instructions, you know, and the website says, hey, look, I went on there. What's supposed to happen day seven, day eight? And it goes, there's a good chance you slipped up today. I was like, whoa, okay. They go, that's okay. Don't give up. Tomorrow morning, take your pill and don't smoke. Or do your best to not smoke. And so I kept taking the pill and doing my best not to smoke. And so this medicine, it gets into the receptors of the brain where you derive this pleasure sensation from nicotine. Now, someone who's never been a smoker, of course, you you, you don't understand what I'm talking about. Um, if you've ever had a glass of wine, maybe you understand. I don't know. It doesn't make you drunk. It just... not sure how to explain it, but anyway. The Chantix, it takes a week to get in there, but it's more powerful than the nicotine. And so the receptors in the brain that the nicotine attach, this nicotine attaches itself to these receptors, and it gives you this quote-unquote pleasurable sensation, this feel-good. When you think about it, all it's doing is taking away the pain because you've become addicted to a drug, nicotine. You've become addicted, you're, and when you don't smoke for a half an hour, you go into withdrawals. And so to get yourself out of withdrawals, you go put some more nicotine in your body. What an insidious thing this smoking is. And man, did they learn how to capitalize on that thing. Um, so here's what happens with me is I got down to where I was smoking like a half a cigarette in the morning and a half a cigarette in the afternoon. And then it finally dawned on me, you know what, Dwayne? You're getting no pleasure out of smoking these cigarettes. That's been robbed because when you, when you smoke, you can't get that little zing in your brain because the receptor's already f blocked. It's full. You know, nicotine comes knocking at the door. The door won't open. So now it's like, well, there's, not, there's no point in smoking. All it does is it tastes bad, and it makes me smell weird. So maybe I just won't smoke. And that's how I became a non-smoker. I said, maybe today I just won't smoke. This is after, like, you know, I had gone maybe two weeks beyond the point where you're supposed to have completely stopped. But they tell you, if you slip, if you have a cigarette, don't give up, don't abandon ship, just, you know, keep trying. And so I did, and by the grace of God, it was a Sunday afternoon, April the 13th, and Saturday afternoon, I'm sorry, my wife and I were headed out uh, Monday morning, we were flying to Paris, it was springtime in Paris. It was the dream honeymoon I had always promised her that we didn't have as young kids when we got married. 
Uh, we spent, we got married here in Phoenix. We, we spent our honeymoon night at a hotel out in Tempe. In fact, not too far down the road from where I live now. And uh, I had to be at work the next morning at 6 a.m. Monday morning. So that, so for all the years, I said, someday, honey, nice honeymoon. You know, we'll, we'll, do, it, we'll do it upright. And so we did springtime in Paris. And, and it was wonderful. But let me just say, when you're going to try to quit smoking, maybe going to Paris is not the best route to take because there, not only do people smoke a lot, they smoke like two cigarettes at a time. They got two in each hand. I mean, they are heavy smokers. Uh, not everybody smokes, but it sure seemed like everybody was smoking. And, and I remember thinking, if I can just get through this I think we were there for 10 days. If I can get through these 10 days with all these people smoking all these cigarettes around me, I just might make it, you know? And um, I would get up in the mornings very early. Uh, my wife was vacation. She wanted to sleep in. But because I was going through this whole, you know, cigarette withdrawal about 5 a.m. when I would, on a normal work day, that's when I'd be outside smoking a couple cigarettes so I could then shave and shower and go to work and blah, 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 you know, boing, 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 my eyes would pop open at 5 a.m. And so I would put my clothes on and quietly slip out of the room. And they had a very nice breakfast buffet in this hotel we were staying in in Paris. And I would go and I would have the buffet breakfast. And then I would get out and just start walking. No map, no sense of direction, just, just walk. And, you know, I was in a I was in France. I, in the military, I went all over the Pacific, uh, in the Australia, Hong Kong, Korea, Philippines, lived in Japan, uh, Hawaii, Guam. I mean, I, the military is, I think, no one wants to see their son or daughter go to war, but from an educational and a disciplinary and even a hygiene status, uh, the military does teach young men and women something very powerful. Uh, I was not uh, a squared away sailor, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I went in, I was going to be nuclear physicist or engineer, but I dropped that ball shortly after I got in. Turned out I'd rather go party with the boys and drink than to, you know, stay in the, in the dorm and crack the books. And so... Anyway, um, I was in France, and I would take these long walks, and I would pass the stores, and the bars were open early in the morning, and people were out lounging around. And it's like everywhere you look, nuns were smoking. <laughs> Oh, uh, little babies. You'd go, like, you know, some mother would come by with a little baby in a stroller, and you peep over in the in the buggy, and he's <laughs> got a big old stogie. You know, he's puffing it. <laughs> oh my goodness! But I did it by the grace of God, not by my own strength, because I just poof. by the grace of God and the little blue pill chantix. Uh, I'm now five years free. And I mean, I really was in bondage. I was, I was a prisoner. Uh, and the fact that they went up to like eight bucks a pack, uh, that was some pretty good incentive as well. So it's amazing to me when I see the people out by the freeway flying the sign, I'm homeless, could you please help me? Anything helps, you know. My heart goes out to Pete too, because most of you know my story. My wife and I, we had an inner city ministry for many years and broken lives, that was our currency. And because once our lives were broken, and so God was there for us, and so we chose to be there for other people and to point them towards God. We couldn't, we couldn't cure them or fix them, we could just, but we knew how to point them to the one who could. And, and our lives were the example that it really worked, you know? If somebody said, Dude, do you have any evidence that this whole Jesus thing actually works? Uh, funny you should ask. Yes, I do. I have evidence that will stand up in a court of law. Uh, ask someone who knew me five years ago. 
Or, or let me take you over here and show you the dumpster that I used to dine out of. Now, this is a guy who once uh, drove a Jaguar, a Porsche, a uh, Mercedes 450 SL, and a Saab. Not all at the same time, uh, but, I mean, I, I had it all. But, but, but what stuff? Apparently, nothing. It's fickle. Because you can have stuff, and then you can not have stuff in the blink of an eye. Now, being a man who's like Richard Pryor, who's had stuff and not had stuff, having stuff is actually better. <laughs> having money and not having money, having monies, it's actually better. It, it really is. And so I vote for having some money. Because you can do stuff. You can help people. You don't have to just feed your, you know, insanity. You can make the world a better place. You can help people, right? People who at the moment can't help themselves. And all you ask in return is when they go like, man, how can I ever repay you? Uh, you can't. Oh, well, that's pretty arrogant of you. No, no, no. No, no, you can't pay me back. But what you can do is you can pay somebody else back. Huh? Well, I helped you. Now, when you get a chance, you help somebody. And you make them promise to help somebody because you help them. Pretty soon, we get this whole thing going on. People helping people. I don't know. It could be a Beatles song or something. I don't know. People. People who need people. Right? <laughs> Hey, it's Friday. I can spend it any way I want. This is my happy Friday. The wife's away. She's out with some lady friends from the church. They had a nice lunch. They're doing a little light shopping. Uh, my children are downstairs behaving. Uh, there's no, in fact, <laughs> they're they're too quiet. I better go check on them. Uh, <laughs> it, it's, yeah, just too quiet. I think it's time to take them for pizza Friday. Who Who wants pizza? Apparently, I do. Um, Returning visitor. So, I won't have to cook. All right. So, we've covered all the markets. We had a nice day in the S&P. Had a nice week in the S&P. In the bonds. In the crude oil. In the euro. In the soybeans. In the Dow, E mini futures. In the Russell. And in the gold. It truly was a blessed week. So let me invite you to come and join us next week and see if what we do is right for you. And if you're already a partner, of course, I'll see you Monday morning in the live trading room. But if you're not a partner, or maybe you haven't even taken the trial, well, goodness, go take the trial. It's free, okay? It really is. There's no trick. It's actually free. The concierge trade alert trial, that costs a buck. If you don't have the buck, I'll front it to you. Seriously. I mean, if you, if you don't have the buck for the trial, then I don't know how you're going to pay for the course, but we'll worry about that a week from now. Go to this address, cfrn.net apply, slash apply, or it's really, you can do it from our homepage. We, we've tried to make it as easy, as simple as possible. Trading's not easy, but it can be simple, okay? Name, email, you'll get an automated response, which means it could go to your bulk folder, your spam box, your uh, promotions folder, wherever your email hides stuff, go look there, okay? Because you got to click the link. Once you click the link, then I get notified and Michael gets notified that you have signed up and want to take a trial. That's when we spring into action and we manually send you an email to up the chances that you actually get it in your inbox. We manually send you an email that has the link and the password to next week. It also, it's a lengthy email. Could you do me a favor and just read the whole thing, all right? It'll save you 
sending a lot of questions, which later on you'll be end up going, huh, I should have just read the email, huh? Yeah, well, that's okay. So, but read it. It'll tell you how to go download the platform, how to get the indicators up and running, whether you're going to go with the DT Pro. That's what we recommend. We don't get paid in anything. We don't get a finder's fee or split of the commissions if you go with Daniel's Trading and DT Pro. Uh, we just recommend it because of Bert and Leslie. They are the finest two uh, brokers and two of the finest people that I've ever known in my life. Uh, and I like, you know, sometimes they say, well, the commissions are too high over there. Well, I mean, the round turn, the S&P, for example, okay, if you buy or sell one S&P 500 e-mini contract, you're controlling over $100,000 of equity in the S&P 500 best of breed. Now, the round turn commission for that trade, the get in and the get out. It's not like stocks where you pay, you know, 10 bucks per trade to get in and then 10 bucks per trade to get out. You pay one money for a round trip ticket in the world of futures. And so I pay Burton Leslie $5.80 per round turn for every e mini contract that I trade SP, Russell, Dow, NASDAQ. Other markets, it costs like a dollar more. Okay. And I think some markets might even be a dollar less. But anyway. I know them. I know that they have families. I know that Bert has some, you know, beautiful daughters. And so I've got to pay somebody, right? Now, I could pay the big discount brokerage house and, and get like really, really, really cheap margins. But at some point, I'm going to have a problem. I'm going to have an issue. And when I try to get it resolved, somebody's going to say, well, what do you expect? This is a discount brokerage house. They don't have time to hold your hand, okay? It's two different business models. And maybe you don't need your hand held. Maybe you don't ever get stuck in a trade. Maybe you don't ever need help or a word of encouragement from your broker, okay? Um, I like that. They're family to us, okay? Now, if it was twenty-five eighty per round turn, then I'd, I would have an issue with that. But it's it's 580, okay? So um, they're there for you to help you when you need them. So if you sign up for this free trial over the weekend and you need some help, you won't be able to reach them, but you'll be able to reach them first thing Monday morning. Now, they'll help you with the platform all the way through while you're on the trial. Bert will even sit in the live trading room with you and through private message, Try to help you spot trade setups, okay? When's the last time a broker did that? Now, somebody's somebody out there is thinking, well, psh, if he has to do that, if he has to sit around and hold the hands of newbies, he must not be much of a broker. No, he's a fine broker. Very intelligent. Heart of gold. And doggone good at his job. He approaches the business differently, you know? Most brokers realize that 9 out of 10 traders are going to blow up and blow out in the first year. So they wait you out. They wait and see what's going to happen. If by chance you happen to still be around two years later, they, they might actually take your call when you call in. you know, Or they might even pick up the phone and call you. Oh my God, you, you, you survived a whole year. How'd you do that? You should write a book. Bert and Leslie believe that you're going to make it. Why? Because they know that you have Mike and I to help you and that you have them to help you if you want. Their toll-free number is 866-928-3310. That's the DT Pro platform. If you want to go the Ninja route, okay, then you've probably already got Ninja. Read that email we send you. Watch the video. It will tell you to send us your machine ID so we can turn on the indicators for you on your machine for a week so you can do the trial. Everything you need is in that email. But if you have any problems, Michael and I take turns over the weekend watching the store. So one of us always has an eyeball on the 
email. And if you need something, uh, we'll help you out, okay? You won't be able to log into the live trading room until Monday morning. It won't open until 9.30 a.m. Eastern. However, um, if you want to get on the free trial list, you need to do that today because there's like a 24-hour lag in the way that works. And so the next free trade is going to go out Sunday night at 7 p.m. Eastern. Markets open at 6. The free trade is going to go out at 7 p.m. Eastern. Okay? So if you want to be a part of that, go ahead and take the free trial. Take the concierge free trial. Take the uh, free trades trial. It's three different things we have to offer. If you want all three, email me support at cfrn.net. <laughs> I have the keys to the shop this weekend. I can do anything, you know. Dance on my desk later. No, seriously, if you need help, call us, 949-42-E-MINI. 949-42-E-MINI. You know, some people go, man, there's something weird about you guys. You two, you work all the time. Okay, well, we're building something here. We're building something bigger than ourself. We're, we're getting ready to kick into hyperdrive something that's going to scale this business like whoa okay now there it's it's an old-fashioned work ethic you work really hard you put away something for you know the latter days and then you enjoy some quality of life that's where we're at in the stream of things right now so yeah my family would like to see a little bit more of me each day uh, but they also know that dad's working real hard to put things together in such a way that uh, we'll be able to spend lots and lots and lots of quality time together, you know, uh, for the rest of our lives. Now, my kids are going to get jobs. They're going to go to college, and uh, my son will probably get a full-ride scholarship, I'm told by his music teacher yesterday, full-ride to uh, the college of his choice. Um, I don't. We didn't talk about Juilliard, but... He said, yeah, Dwayne, as long as he doesn't, you know, start getting in trouble and, you know, he, he says if he continues at the rate he's, he's only in eighth grade. He says if he keeps it up, he'll, he'll get full ride. No problem. New but then they'll have jobs and maybe Gabe's job will be in the entertainment field. Uh, or maybe he'll teach. Uh, Emily says she wants to be a doctor. I don't know. But, uh. We're not going to have kids that just sit around and, you know, because mom and dad worked hard and now they don't have to. No, we don't believe in that. It's not good. The Bible doesn't believe in Jesus don't doesn't believe in that. Okay. Uh, we should all be gainfully engaged in making this world a better place. I'm going to tell you something, and, I, and I'll just end with this because I know I've gone into the to the Reeves ramble. Um uh, if you can learn to focus your energy on putting other people's wants and needs ahead of your own, if you can learn to put your focus on making the world a better place for other people, for people who cannot help themselves, if that becomes the thing that you get up for every day, I got news for you. You just fixed every problem you ever had as far as money goes. Now, I know that sounds like some kind of prosperity gospel, name it, claim it stuff, but it's not. I'm telling you it's not. It's just, it's the goodness of God. If you take care of the less fortunate, the least of these, he says, when you do it for them, you do it for me. So I'm not asking you for any kind of a donation. I'm just telling you to connect, you know, on a heart level with whatever it is that God created you to do, the purpose, the passion. I mean, whatever you're doing right now for a living, that's fine. That's great. That's wonderful. But you, I pray that you're in touch with something on the inside that you know you're going to do someday, okay? 
Now, I'm going to be honest. I've watched a lot of people put that someday off for so long that it became a never day. They reached a point in their life where their health or whatever other situations just wouldn't allow them to pursue that passion that God, that they knew God created them for. And so maybe you can't do it whole hog. Now, my, you know, my best friend and my pastor for many years, when he retired, he and him and his wife, they moved to Kenya, right across the border uh, from where we have the orphanage in Kampala, Uganda, East Africa. Now, they could have bought a Winnebago and traveled the country. They both had a nice retirement. I mean, that's how they could have chosen to live out, you know. And they're so healthy and happy. God's going to give them just, I don't know, probably 30, 40 more years, uh, which will make them really old. But anyway, uh, they're so vibrant. I mean, you see pictures of them. They're healthy and happy and strong and just having the time of their life. Don't, whatever it is that God's called you to do, okay? Maybe you can't drop everything right now and move to Africa, but do something, okay? If God's called you to work with, you know, the homeless, well, start hanging out at the homeless shelter, okay? Well, I, I, I can't do anything for them. You can be a friend. You can talk to them. Well, they'll just hit me up for money. Tell them you don't have any. Or tell them that you don't have any to spare. Or tell them that you don't have money to give them, but if there's something they need, that you'll help them as best you can, whether it's hygiene or, or food or whatever it might be. You don't have to be a rich person or a wealthy man to make someone else's life better, okay? Now, are there a lot of people out there that'll try to take advantage of you, just get your money, they could care less about you? Yeah, that's where the discernment of the Holy Spirit comes into play. God speaks to your heart, you know? Now, and that's just one example that maybe God asks you to, you know, minister to homeless people. Maybe he's given you something totally different in another direction. Find some small way to get started today. Right now. Don't put it off another day. Do something tonight. Even if it's sending an email to some agency or organization that does work in the field that God's called you. Do you have any openings, any apprenticeships, any, any, anything I can do? Can I fold some flyers and stuff envelopes? What can I do? I got to get the ball rolling. I'm telling you, you put things in motion like that, you're going to feel God's hand at your back. You're going to feel his breath on the, on the back of your neck. <laughs> Get ready. Get ready for an adventure. Get ready for a life-changing experience. It's going to be good. I love you. Hope you have a great weekend. I'll see you Monday morning in the live trading room. Take care.